Okay, I had some technical difficulties, so I already wrote the notes out for this, so I'll just explain them. Okay, so chapter 8 is all about quadrilaterals. We talked a little bit about quadrilaterals in the beginning of the year, when we talked about finding the interior angle sum and things like that. We're going to talk specifically now about quadrilaterals, okay, and some special types of them. So there's actually seven types of special quadrilaterals, um, and we're going to talk about lots of different properties of them as we go along. Okay, so the first one is a parallelogram. Remember, quadrilateral means a, a, a shape that has four sides. A parallelogram um, is a quadrilateral that has both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So it would look like this, okay? Um, so the opposite sides are parallel here. So PS is parallel to QR, and PQ is parallel to SR. And there's a symbol here. This is the symbol for parallelogram. It looks like a rectangle tilted on its side. And you just pick, remember to name polygons, you pick any of the letters, start with any of the letters and go either counterclockwise or clockwise to label them, okay? A rhombus, which you're probably used to hearing, you probably think of a rhombus as a diamond, but it turns out diamond is not actually a geometric shape. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with four congruent sides. So kind of mark them all here. It's like a, a square tilted on its side a little bit, okay? But it's still a parallelogram, but it has four congruent sides. A rectangle is a parallelogram with four right angles, which you're used to seeing here, okay? So it's a rectangle with a parallelogram that has four right angles. Um, again, opposite sides would still be parallel because it's still a parallelogram. And a square is a parallelogram with four congruent sides and four right angles, okay? If you're copying your notes, maybe you want to push pause and get caught up a little bit. Um, but a square has four congruent sides and four right angles. So you can actually say a square, since it has four congruent sides, is also a rhombus, okay? And a square, since it has four right angles, is also a rectangle. O every rectangle is not a square, and every, <coughs> excuse me, every rhombus is not a square, okay? But it goes um, the other direction. And we'll talk more about that on the next page when we talk about the quadrilateral family tree, okay? So those are all special types of parallelograms because they all still have opposite sides parallel, okay? A kite, yes, kite is the name of a geometric shape. Um, people always think, think that doesn't exist. It does. It's the name of a shape, okay? It is a quadrilateral with two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Consecutive means they're, in the, they're right next to each other. They're in order, okay? Interesting thing to point out, opposite sides of a kite are not congruent, okay? So the opposite sides here are not congruent. And it looks like you picture, like a lot of times you call this a diamond kite, okay? So it looks like a kite. If we were still going to be in school, I was going to have my, um, my grandfather, as his hobby is making kites. I was going to have him come in and make them with us. We did this last year, but, you know, we're not going to be in school, so we can't do that. Sorry. Okay, but that is a kite. So again, consecutive sides are congruent. Opposite sides are not congruent. Okay, and nothing is parallel here. A kite is not a parallelogram. Okay, a trapezoid is a, is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So one of the sides is parallel, the other is not. In a trapezoid, the parallel sides are called the bases. So in this case, the base would be BC and AD. And the sides that are not parallel are called the legs. Just like the, we had the legs of a uh, right triangle, we had the legs of a trapezoid, okay? Um, angle A and D and angle B and C are called the base angles. They're the angles that are formed by the base and the leg. Um, and an isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid with congruent legs. Isosceles means the same thing, whether it's talking about a triangle or a trapezoid. A trapezoid with congruent legs, okay? So... I have still have the opposite sides, one opposite sides parallel here. The legs are congruent. That's what makes it an isosceles trapezoid. Okay. We'll see later on there is a thing called the isosceles trapezoid theorem. It probably is exactly what you think it is. Opposite sides are congruent. I mean, the legs are congruent, then the angles opposite them are congruent, just like the isosceles triangle theorem. Okay. So those are the properties of quadrilaterals. Okay. So if you're not done copying, you can hit pause. I'm going to go on to the back, okay? We have the quadrilateral family tree now, okay? This is important because it tells us which things can be named in multiple different ways, 
okay? So we have all, these are all quadrilaterals at the top, okay? And we have th for three different kinds. Quadrilaterals with no parallel sides, quadrilaterals with one pair of parallel sides, quadrilaterals with two pairs of parallel sides, okay? If you have no pair of parallel sides, it's a kite. Again, consecutive sides are congruent, not opposite sides, okay? A quadrilateral with one pair of parallel sides is a trapezoid, so there's the parallel sides, okay? A trapezoid with congruent legs is called an isosceles trapezoid, so sides are, are congruent there, okay? If you have two pairs of parallel sides, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram, opposite sides are parallel, okay? And then we had three special types of uh, parallelograms. If we had a parallelogram with four right angles, it's a rectangle. A parallelogram with four congruent sides is a rhombus. And then a rectangle with four congruent sides is a square, and a rhombus with four right angles is a square. So the way this kind of works, okay, so if we're trying to give names to these quadrilaterals, there's two different ways. You can give the most specific name, or you can give all the possible names. So for example, if I wanted to give the most specific name for this shape right here would be a square, but all the possible names are everything above it it's connected to. So a square is also a rectangle, a square is also a rhombus, square is also then a parallelogram, and a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. So if it said give all the possible names for this shape, you would say rectangle, parallelogram, quadrilateral. It's also, it, it, it does not take the name of anything it does not touch. So in other words, there's no connection between rectangle and rhombus. So a rectangle cannot be called a rhombus and vice versa, okay? So it's, it's a little confusing. Every square can be a rectangle, but every rectangle is not a square. Same thing with rhombus, kind of weird to think about, okay? Nothing that's not connected is not related. So a kite is not a trapezoid and vice versa, okay? Sometimes you get a bunch of mathematicians in the room. Some people try to argue that a kite is a rhombus. Um, we're just not going to do that. Just pretend it's not. Okay. So your homework is just identifying these things and listing all the possible names.